First, uh, the Hasso Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship at the Holy Spirit University of Kassig would like to welcome Michael Cooley as our guest speaker within the ACIE Global Accelerator Program. I would like to share with you that this Accelerator Program was launched last week despite all the neg negativities around us these days, locally and internationally. We wanted to prove to our community of student entrepreneurs that with challenges come opportunities. Michael, you said once, there is nothing that you are going through that you are not strong enough to handle. From there, we are more than happy and thankful for your presence with us today to deliver a session on facing adversity and inspire our program participants with your rich background in the corporate life and as a famous leadership guru across the globe. To our audience, Michael has served as the Managing Director of Reuters Middle East and an Executive Board Member of Reuters Continental Europe, Middle East and Africa. He is also the Chairman and President of the Cambridge Institute for Global Leadership. Michael is continuously active in spreading the knowledge about leadership, authority, strategy, and policy making across the world to top businesses, governments, academic institutions, NGOs, and senior state officials. He is a working bank fellow, author of many books, and the founder of the Cooley Institute. He is also the creator of unique executive leadership programs that have been delivered to thousands of top business executives, NGOs, and government leaders worldwide. He has a portfolio of contributions as a board member and chairman to many leadership initiatives, academies, and NGOs across the, world, across the world, as well as being a research fellow and a visiting scholar with many well-known academic institutions across Europe and the States. Michael did his academic years at AUB, then pursued his graduate and executive studies at University of Michigan Ann Arbor, Princeton University, Harvard University, and Maastricht University. Without further ado, I invite Michael to lead our session today. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Eli. Beautiful presentation. Um, I am pleased and honored to be a guest for your esteemed university. I know your university well, and I know the impact that it has been making over um, over many decades in this country and in, in the region. And uh, I salute also the program of uh, entrepreneurship um, that uh, is uh, more than timely uh, in terms of spreading the right ideas and giving the right inspiration for, uh, for uh, people of all ages. Let me start by saying that um, this is a very dear subject to me uh, because I've spent my life uh, researching and studying leadership and entrepreneurship and strategy. And um, there's especially leadership and entrepreneurship. There are many areas in common between them, but there are also some differences between them. So um, uh, when you talk about leadership, there is an important aspect that's also about entrepreneurship. And when you talk about entrepreneurship, there is also an important aspect about leadership. Why is this important? Because I'll just be uh, straightforward and blunt. Everything that we enjoy now, everything around us, started out of entrepreneurship. Everything. The technology that we're using now, my computer now, my laptop, uh, the smartphone, uh, internet, electricity, uh, the audiovisual equipment, uh, all the various cameras around me, all of these started somewhere in the world at some time uh, as an idea that it then that developed into a plan and then the, the plan was put in action despite all the difficulties and uh, the actions resulted in good fruit and we're enjoying them now. So if you look at any product or service, that you enjoy now, whether in the technology that we, pra that we praise and that amazes us, or in communication, transportation, artificial intelligence, you know, uh, 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 you name it, you name it. The, the whatever forms our civilization now that we're proud of is the result 
of entrepreneurial ideas that began all of this uh, journey, that began the journey of creating all these products and services. So I salute all of you, uh, the community of entrepreneurs, wherever you are in the world, because you are the people who are um, creating future as we speak now. And I salute you for many reasons as well. Mainly I salute you for your courage and I salute you for your perseverance. And I salute you for re your resilience. I'll just give you a small case study that we're just living now that, is, that talks a little bit about entrepreneurship, if I may, Eli. While we're starting... Yes. But let me interrupt you. Apologies, but if you can, if you can raise your voice, because there are, uh, we have multiple comments asking if you, if you can increase your voice, raise your voice, a little bit. Okay. Can you hear me better now? Is it better? Is it better now? Yes. Sure, it's better. Uh, some of them are saying no, some of them are, are saying uh, Personally, I'm hearing you, some others are saying no. Okay, I'm going to, sh I'm going to, s uh, to, to speak at a louder volume. Is that fine? <laughs> so, so I'll just give you a case study of what entrepreneurship is, is like, or at least the environment where entrepreneurship operates. When we started to prepare for this session, this session has been talked about for several weeks, of, or, or if not months. And it was planned through several meetings to get to this day. And we got to this day. It's now at 5 o'clock now when, when we're supposed to start. And the idea was is to do a test trial at 4.30. Just a few minutes before we started this test trial, after setting up everything, all the video, uh, audiovisual equipment as if you were here, you will see them. Suddenly, electricity went down. No electricity. Even the generator went down. And internet went down. So we had to change everything in about 10 or 15 minutes. And the last resort, if you can just see the way we're improvising. And the last resort, we're using now you know, LTE or 4G technology. Uh, through connecting to different devices and we change laptops and stuff just to be on air and make it now. Now, this is a sample of what it takes to be an entrepreneur because the journey of entrepreneurship is a journey of pain, is a journey of suffering, is a journey of frustration, is a journey of disappointments, is a journey of negative surprises and maybe some positive surprises as, as, as well. It's a journey of setbacks, it's a journey of failure. And as we speak, we have experienced all this now live, live. But as you can see, did we give up? We did not give up. Did we postpone? We did not postpone. Did we apologize? We did not apologize. Did we compromise? We did not compromise. We just move. We just move. Ah, shut up. Hold on. <laughs> Can you hear me, Eli? Uh, yes, uh, still, uh, Michael, if you, can, if you have uh, earphones nearby, I think it will improve the voice, if you have. Take a quick Afna. If give, you have earphones. Give me, give me my backpack. Atini backpack. It's okay, guys. Let's stay positive and uh, everything will be perfect. So let's start the session uh, beautifully. And well done anyway. Um, Things happen. Lala, this is, uh, I'm not discouraged, in fact, on the contrary, because this is exactly, this is exactly, guys, what you will go through when you exercise entrepreneurship. This is exactly what will happen. When you have everything ready, absolutely everything. When you have everything ready, uh, Michael's earphone connect. Test, test, test. Can you hear me? Test, test, test. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Is it better? Is it better? Is it better? Is it better? 
Yes, yes. Uh, no, no, wait until something else. I expect something else to happen. Maybe this battery also will collapse. I mean, who knows what will happen? So, so, so let's go back. Can you hear me well? Okay, yeah, let's go back. So, 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 as you can see, this is, uh, this is a natural, unplanned, unplanned simulation, real simulation of what entrepreneurship will feel like. Because you will spend months and years uh, preparing a business plan, preparing a plan, launching your effort, making sure that you know you have the money, your idea is clear, uh, you've done your research, you've everything is in line, and then when it's time for when it's time for um, when it's time for uh, for implementation, uh, things will go wrong. But y since you are an entrepreneur, because you are an entrepreneur, you have oh, giving up is not an option. We could have easily said, you know, guys, maybe the gods or whatever the spirits are against us, and this is not destined to go live. But if we do that, then why are we talking about entrepreneurship? And why are we talking about the resilience that also is needed to exercise leadership while you're exercising entrepreneurship? So giving up is not an option. Um, surrendering to failure is not an option. Um, um, being disappointed, being depressed, uh, going in a bad mood, uh, turning negative is not an option because the only difference that the main difference that the, o the main difference guys, the main difference that distinguishes entrepreneurship from uh, regular business, from uh, regular management, because I've been in both sides. I've been as an entrepreneur and I'll tell you how later. And also I've been a CEO for, you know, three times over a long period of time, including in some major international organizations. Entrepreneurs are distinguished by having a much higher level of courage. Entrepreneurs have much more resilience than r regular sort of standard corporate type CEOs. Entrepreneurs have more tolerance to failure. Entrepreneurs have more tolerance to risk taking. Entrepreneurs and uncertainty are friends. Entrepreneurs and 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 um, and uh, uh, what should I say? Entrepreneurs and problems and troubles and um, uh, are, are friends. In, in, if you go to the core concept, Shusar, what happened? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hold on, something went wrong on my own. Didn't disconnect? No, I'm still on. Huh? Hey, that's how it is. That's how it is. That's how it is. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Test, test, test. We were cut out again. And what do I do? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Can you speak to so see if I can hear you? Yes, I'm hearing you. Okay, I'm hearing you as well. You know what, Eli? Why don't we go straight to questions? Because... Uh, I think questions are more important now than me talking about this. What do you think? Okay. Uh, at least uh, if you can give them some directions first for the conversation, and then we can open it for questions. See, and to be to have something uh, to reflect on. Okay. At least set set a challenge for them or okay. something to reflect on. Okay. Uh, okay. To open, to, to open the conversation from your side. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, in, in the interest uh, in the interest of time and just to adapt to the problems of technology, I'm going to go through key points that I have outlined on what you absolutely need in your entrepreneur entrepreneurship journey. Now, I know maybe some of you, if not all of you, the, you know this already. But what matters is not if you know it intellectually. What matters if you live by this. 
because as you can see from the difficulties that we have been facing, this is reality. Reality is non-negotiable. Reality always prevails. So if you know them intellectually, it doesn't really make that difference. What matters is that you live by this. And I'll tell you what these things are. Number one, you have to find a clear sense of purpose. Why are you having, why do you have this idea that you want to launch? Why do you have this idea that you want to dedicate your time and effort and energy and money and maybe other people's money? So you have to have a very clean sense of purpose because you will be tested as we have been tested today through by conducting this um, uh, this uh, this conversation or this uh, this talk you will be tested and unless you have your why question your purpose question absolutely very clear in your mind you will give up because we could have easily said we're going to give up we have been fighting all kinds of challenges over the past hour just to make this work the only reason we are still in the game and we haven't said you know what this is not working uh, we don't have luck, the gods are against us, is because we believe in the importance of what we're talking about. And that is to reinforce the message of entrepreneurship and leadership as they go back, they go together. So first you have to have your very clear sense of purpose. Why are you in the game? And you have to stay connected to this game, to this purpose. Every time you have a difficulty, you have to remind yourself and go back and say, you know what? This is why I'm in the game. Otherwise, the difficulty will be so much that you will have to do what? You will have to. Um, you will have to. Um, you will have. You will have to go collapse under the under the effort. The second thing is, you need to have your. You have to do your research. You need to do your homework very well. This is. Uh, you're going into unknown terrain. You're going. You're. You're fighting against all the odds. You're starting something from scratch. You're not, you don't have a proven concept. So you have to really do your research. I cannot overemphasize this point. Maybe this is, you know, you know what Einstein said? Einstein, he said, if I have a problem and I have one hour to solve it and my entire life depends on it, I will spend 55 minutes thinking about the problem and only five minutes on the execution. So you will have to spend all the time that you need to do the proper research market research, research uh, your competitors, you research uh, the, the, the market terrain, you research your product, you research the industry, you research the economic trend, research the right timing, research or your resources, you research your mindset, just to make sure that you have everything that you need, everything that it takes, so that you can pull out this one. You can pull it off and you can succeed. Because even if you've done that, even if you've done that, and you have absolutely brilliantly researched the whole thing, and you're ready, you will still find difficulties as you have, as we have been facing now. As I said, it, with this effort, it took months to prepare for this talk, months. And we're doing everything by the book, and especially this week. And look what happened the last minute. Complete disaster. Right? In terms of, uh, you know, oh, everything collapsed, you name it. And nothing from our making, it's from external element. And this is the nature of entrepreneurship. That's why you have to have absolute clear research. Otherwise, you're going into the dark. Imagine, you have your mind eyes closed, and it's dark, and you're walking into a minefield. You're going to definitely face a disaster. The third point is absolute focus. You need to have clear focus. You cannot be disoriented. You need to focus on your idea because it takes so much effort. And within that focus, you have to subdivide this focus. So whatever you're doing in, in, in terms of subtitles or in terms of subtasks or major tasks from strategy to the tactical point, you have to be dead focused. And what, dis what distinguishes a successful person from somebody who is less successful is the ability to focus, to channel all their energy, intellectual energy, mental energy, emotional energy, spiritual energy, you name it, all in focused in the direction that will create progress. Number four is that you have to be clear of the finances. You can forget about all your idea if you don't have money. Forget about all of that. It doesn't have to be your money. It could be somebody else's money. But you have to have financing because 
you guys you can see surprises will happen even if you have the best plans you get the best consultants have the best cfos and do all the you know all the uh, finances you have all the balance sheets and the spreadsheets everything is ready you have entire your study is ready you will be surprised the people who have uh, who have been engaged in building their homes or refurbishing their homes they know that you have a budget in mind to build a home or to refurbish your home and then when you start doing it it's suddenly two or three times more than your budget so these things will happen so you have to have very good crisp crisp on your finances on your cash management i know many cases where after two or three years people had to stop because of money no money you can't do it now of course no good idea no money but the brilliant, if you, you have the best idea, and if you didn't manage to do proper lobbying to get your money in order over the long term, including provisions for surprises, then you will, ha you will face difficulties. The fifth idea is communication. How can you be an entrepreneur if you can't communicate your idea, your purpose, your passion to the people? You can't do that. How can you convince investors? How can you convince uh, talent, good talent, to join you, to join your team, and and make this leap of faith, right, into becoming part of your unproven concept? If you don't know how to communicate your passion, how to communicate your vision, how you communicate your purpose, you need to have very clear communication skills, absolutely brilliant communication skills, right? You need to have that. And I'm reminded of a person, I'll just tell you a story, a friend of mine, he had, he had ideas and he managed to get a group of communicators, uh, sorry, a group of investors into a room. So he was introduced by his main friend who, who, was, who was the host. There are like 50 top investors. This was in the United States. And the way he introduced him was the following. He said, I give you so and so, this man has tried so many ideas and failed. That's how I introduced him. And my friend said, oh my God, he just killed me. What do you mean? How can he do that? But what his friend was telling his, the investors is that this guy is resilient. This guy is persistent. This guy knows what he's doing. And this guy, you know, has the right stamina and energy to make it through what it takes to be an entrepreneur. And then he said, I give you the floor. And then I said, I give you the floor. And it was my friend's passion, my friend's very fluent communication uh, skills, his ability to articulate his ideas clearly, concisely, straight to the point, in a sharp way, that made the message go across and that made these people believe in what he was saying, right, because they could understood him, relate to what he was saying. He communicated his heart and his mind to them so that they invested in him. So communication is absolutely important. Now, another one, adaptability. If you don't adapt, you know this, you die, especially in entrepreneurship. Because even if you have the most brilliant plan, the future will never, ever, ever, ever be like what you thought it is. Never. You have the best idea and vision about the future. It's all clear in your mind. Let me tell you something. When this ends, it will be totally different than what you had in mind. You, you, nobody knows the future. And in entrepreneurship, especially when you're starting with an idea, usually the idea that will, you will succeed it will end up the real idea, the final idea, will be in many cases completely or to a great extent different than what you started with. Because that's reality. And who are you and me to know the future? How do we know what's, how it's going to end up? We have our perceived vision about how we think things are, how we think the client is thinking, the potential customer is thinking, the market is thinking, the market will react, you know? We have this perceptions of that but what do we know about real life nothing I mean look at your life how does your life compare to what your plans were you know 10 15 years ago I bet to a great extent different and the same thing will happen so you have to be you have to be adaptive absolutely you have to be adaptive hundred percent you have to be adaptive if you're not adaptive especially in entrepreneurship uh, you will die and to be adaptive you have to have two traits you have to be flexible flexible absolutely flexible and only stupid people don't change their mind. You know, I read something that if you have the same mindset at 50 that you had when you were 20, then you've just wasted 30 years of life because you haven't learned anything. So you have to be flexible. If you, you can't be stubborn. If you're stubborn, you're an idiot because you're not reading the data. You are, you're committing suicide. And the second thing, you have to have be, you have to be a learner. 
because your journey, your best teacher is not the MBA. I've been to Harvard Business School. I spent, I studied there with Michael Porter, the father of, of modern strategy. And I've been to the Kennedy School of Government at Harvard University and Princeton University. I've sat in the same classes where Einstein taught, you know, with the greatest mind, right? What I learned from these people is that reality is different than what theory is about. Reality is all different. So what you study in these universities, what you have on business plans, what you have on paper, when you go to the market, uh, it's completely different, just like war. You know, in D-Day, in World War II, they spent two, three years planning for the invasion of Europe, as you know from history. And everything, everything changed after the first bullet was fired. Everything changed. The entire two, three years of plan changed. And you have to be ready for that. And you have to learn as you go. You have to learn as you go. Day by day you learn. How do you learn? You fail. And you don't call it failure. You see, okay, there is more data. Failure is data. Success is data. It's not an emotional thing. Success and ego, the way people usually talk about it, is an ego thing. Who cares about success and ego? Who cares about this? What matters is that you implement your idea and this idea succeeds and sees light. Success and ego is that definitions about, you know, emotional state of being. N it doesn't matter. What matters is that what you have in mind, the plan evolves to whatever it takes so that it is successful. And for that, you need to be have a learner's mentality. And the best teacher for you is your failures. So you have to stop using the word failure. You have to call it a lesson. I know some of you these, these say the, uh, have heard the, you, these things. And to some of you, these are cliches. But guess what? Cliches are cliches because there are truths that stand the test of time. And it doesn't matter, as I said to you, whether you understand this at the intellectual level. What will determine your success as an entrepreneur or not, if you live by these things. You live by these things. And that's what will determine what you, uh, if you will succeed. We talked about persistence. We talked about having you know, the right business plan. You absolutely have the right business plan. A plan, you know what's the purpose of the business plan? First and foremost, the purpose of the business plan is to convince yourself. Some people write business plans so that they can convince uh, investors, right? And then when you go to an investor, investors are not fools, they're not idiots. When they look at this, they've seen a million people like yourself. Right? They know how to read through this. And they know that all of this will not work in the first place. They know what you're showing them is just dreams because it's, it's from La La Land. You haven't really tested it in reality. So the main purpose of the business plan is to convince yourself you have to know that this will work. Therefore, it should not have any illusions. It has to be absolutely realistic. Right? So you convince yourself through your business plan what is going to do, how you're going to do it, who's going to help you, how much it's going to cost, right? By what time? The entire business plan. Right? Then you go to the market and you have to know how to raise money. And when you raise money, as you know, you have to be resilient because 99% of the doors will be slapped in your face. The past few years, I've written 10 books. It takes two to three years to write a book. In the past five or six years, I've written 10 books or average two to three books a year. Why? Because I've been thinking about these things for a long time, absolutely long time, right? And the first book I wrote, is called Finding Your Hummus. You know that. I'm sure if you have seen it, this is a book about entrepreneurship. The word hummus is a, is a funny word, but it's a metaphor for finding your purpose, personal and, and organizational purpose. It's really about entrepreneurship. The first time I wrote the book, I sent it to a publisher. I still have the email, and I'm going to frame it one day. He said, sir, I'm going to be very blunt. Writing is not for you find another job, you're not a writer, you know? Don't waste my time, don't send me more script. I still have it. And look, now I have 10 books. 10 of, some of them are, you know, are Amazon's bestsellers. Why did I do that? Why did I do that? Because I said, who cares about what the other people say? The word no means tries again. Every time somebody said no, it means, okay, go back, learn, and try again. Go back, learn, and try again. So if you don't build a thick skin to get used to the word no, if you are so fragile emotionally, mentally, intellectually, then 
it, the market and the reality will crush you because the market, you know, there are 8 billion people who think they have brilliant ideas, who think they have to be billionaires. And now with social media and all these silly examples about Elon Musk, Richard Branson, you know, Jeff Bezos, and everybody is dreaming to have this kind of life. Of course, they have not, no clue about what reality is all about. So you're not alone. There are 8 billion people who are hungrier than you are, who are more driven, they want also to succeed. So you're not alone. So most probably you will get no, you will get, you will get dismissal, you will get rejections. If you don't have a sick skin to say for no, you will not be able to raise money. You will fail, right? So forget about no's. I have decided, somebody told me, I read down once about a writer, he said, uh, I, he, said he suffered 90, 900 rejections. And I said to myself, I'm going to quit at 901. I'm going to, I'm already factoring in 900 rejections. So I'm going to quit as Michael, as an author, as an entrepreneur of, uh, of you know, writing books and publishing and you know, uh, being in the, in the, in the, in the media and in the, in the leadership world. Uh, 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 I'm, going to, uh, t I'm, I'm going to accept 900, after 900 I'm going to start being sad and depressed. And so far, of course, it didn't go to 100, to 900, and that's, have to, that's what you have to do. Now, execution, execution, execution. Even the best strategy, even the best strategy, without, even the best strategy, without the best execution, it will fail. So execution, bad execution kills the best strategy. And I've written a book called Beyond Strategy, especially to emphasize that one. You need to be master in execution. Right? Because you don't want sloppy execution to kill what you're doing. Uh, the last thing I want to say, the last two things, I want to talk about networking. I want to talk about networking. Uh, you need to have networking. You cannot be an introvert sitting at home, you know, and thinking just by sitting at home, people will you know, find out about your story and they will rush from all over the place just to give you support. You have to know how to tell your story and you have to get out and practice your story by telling it to people are over and over and over and over and over again until somebody says, okay, I believe in you, right? So you have to be a master storyteller and you have to be uh, an extrovert, uh, forcing yourself to be an extrovert, networking as much as you can, having dozens and dozens, you know, thousands of business cards, spreading your business cards left, right and center because you will never ever know where the right opportunity will come from. So you have to do that. And the last point that I want to, to say and then stop is courage, courage, courage. This is uh, number one, number absolutely number. If I have to choose two words is courage and perseverance. Courage and perseverance. You have to have courage. You have to have courage so that through courage you can uh, you can stand up. This is my book about you know beyond beyond strategy. Especially I wrote it with an entrepreneurial mindset so that so that people understand that you have to have strategy and you have to have good attention to execution and you have to go through adaptation of the whole process. So you have to have courage so that when, when circumstances, when uh, doubt, uh, self-doubt, when lack of self-confidence, when failure, when negative people around you, when average people you know, average people who want you to be average like them, put you down, kill your spirit. You have to have the courage to say, I don't care what people say. I'm doing this for myself because this idea is an extension of myself. This idea is who I am, right? This, is, uh, this idea is my baby, right? Now, I'm not going to be stubborn about it. I'm going to open my mind and I'm going to learn as much as I can as we move forward, but I'm not going to give up. And for that, you need courage because only courage will keep you in the game and, and will, keep you, will keep you persistence. Now, um, there are other ideas, of course, like having a differentiated product because you're not alone, there's competition there. So if you're not bringing something new in whatever form, it doesn't matter if it's a design thing, packaging thing, servicing thing. It doesn't have to be a revolutionary product that, you know, you have to invent something from scratch. It doesn't have to be that. You can invent, you can innovate in any way to create differentiation. So you need differentiation so that you can, 
so that you have a space that competition does not kill you. You need to know how to um, get feedback from people so that you can continue to develop and evolve yourself. You need to know how to build your prototype, how you test them, right? You need to know how to do all of that. So you need to know all of this. And you need to know also that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, uh, um, that, uh, um, that the, although it will be difficult, that uh, although they will have difficulties, but if you stay in the game, uh, trust me, future will be even better than you expected. Future will be even better than you expected. We try to have visions about the future, and 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 uh, of course that's important. But in my experience and in what I have seen, for especially the people entrepreneurs future ended up being much better than expected. And the best is yet to come. Now, I wanted to speak about some issues or some points also that make entrepreneurs fail. I don't know if we have time to that, or if you want to go straight to questions and answers because the battery of my laptop also is dying and the electricity is not back yet, so we have to manage time properly. So what do you want to do? Should I talk about what makes entrepreneurs fail, or should I talk about, should we take questions and answers? Uh, I suggest uh, if, if uh, we have time limitation now for due to technical issues to start receiving some questions if they have. Uh, and if no questions, personally I have some questions and we're more than happy to listen about the failure also. Hello. People are asking, please continue. I assume that they, they are getting much valuable information, so they want to, they want to uh, optimize your presence with us. Okay. So. Okay, that's wonderful. That's wonderful, and I salute I salute uh, your listeners and I salute your the new generation. Uh, it is people like you who will build uh, the future that we dream of it. So well done, and uh, I have no problem, Mili. If you want, we can schedule another session in better situations to talk about to take about uh, you know talk question and answers or whatever it is to to make up for what happened because. You know, I don't want, I apologize on behalf of the universe for what happened, but that's how it is. We can't negotiate with reality. Okay, let me talk about what would make um, uh, uh, and the people who exercise entrepreneurship fail. Number one, people, you can't exercise entrepreneurship if you don't understand self-leadership. You can't do that because you have to have the entire battle is within you. And self-leadership is all is very important. And what's self-leadership? Self-leadership is about mobilizing yourself so that you can overcome your obstacles, the difficulties of life, the setbacks, the failures, deal with the problems so that you move forward and create progress and opportunities and capture these things. That's what self-leadership is. And you have to exercise self-leadership every single morning because when you're an entrepreneur, guess what? You will wake up with a, with a pain in your stomach. You will wake up after nightmares about failures. You will wake up, you know, trying to force yourself to drag yourself out of work because you see the economy collapsing. You see the market collapsing. You see, I don't know, um, the, the uh, situation around you collapsing, uh, uh, unexpected competition. So every single day you have to drag yourself into the process of being perseverant so that you can stay in the game. And for that, you need to exercise self-leadership. That's why, that's why uh, in the book, this, the, this is leadership book. In this book, I dedicated a special part about entrepreneurship and leadership because you cannot exercise entrepreneurship if you don't exercise self-leadership and if you don't exercise leadership within your organization because you have to mobilize people who have so many doubts about you and your product uh, because, because it's not a proven concept. So you need to do that. Right? I'm going to talk quickly about mistakes that, you know, why entrepreneurs fail. Number one is multitasking. People do multitasking. Multitasking, so somebody, I don't know which, which smart guy talked about the importance of multitasking. Well, let me tell you, multitasking does not work. We're not brain designed, our brain is not designed for multitasking. We're designed for focus. Look at your eyes. Your eyes cannot see a million things at the same time. Your eyes can see in one direction, and if you really look deep, you can see a very small, very small circle that is uh, within focus. So we're designed to look at one target at a time. So multitasking fails. Multitasking is not right. And the result of multitasking is people do many things that end up being sloppy. You're sloppy, your competition will kill you, execution will kill you, so you've just committed suicide. So that's one side. 
So you focus, focus, focus. Now, how you do different jobs, you have your own style. I know friends who are entrepreneurs, they dedicate one day for finance. They only do finance. Another day for sales. A third day for uh, marketing. A fourth day for, I don't know, recruitment. Five, fifth day for finance or, or, uh, or uh, investors. You name it. But you have to have focus. Number two, perfection. You are not in the business of perfection. You are work in progress. So if you're into perfection, competition will be ahead of you. Always remember that you're not alone in town. While you're doing that, there are 8 billion other people, or not all of them, but at least in the hundreds, who have similar ideas. And the age of te technology, apps, you know, internet, where everything is open, everything is transparent, they might be even you know, faster than you are, right? So, so that's the second one. The third one is stubbornness. As, you, as I said, stubborn people are, forgive my, forgive my expression, they're idiots. Why? Because they've closed their mind to learning. The only thing that you should be stubborn about is the purpose of your, of your entrepreneurship, is why you're there. What are you trying to do? How are you trying to make, to make life difficult? The fourth one is not being a team player. You can never do it by yourself. You know the concept of self-made person. Well, this is rubbish. It's big BS. There's nobody on himself that can do things. You have at least your family behind you, people who taught you, people who are surrounded you, surrounding, surrounding you with support. So self-made person does not exist. It's always a group of people. So you have to know how to be a team player because you and your team will do it together. You can't take all the credit for yourself. The fourth, the fifth one is being overconfident. You can't be overconfident. Overconfident is about ego. Ego is about grandiosity. It's not about you. If you make this about you, then you're just, you're, you're, you're going to die soon, I mean professionally. Why? Because this is greater than you. This is about the idea. It's about the power of the idea itself. When you're stuck in, uh, in yourself, you know, when you become overconfident, you become egoistic and that's, that's, that's suicide because it will all be in your head and that's dangerous. Procrastination. You can't afford to procrastinate. You have to have a process. You have to have a process and you respect the process. Discipline, discipline, discipline. I don't care what it takes. You wake up in the morning and do what you have to do. I don't care if you hate it. You hate paperwork. You hate whatever. You hate talking to people. You hate communicating. It's not about your feelings, you, what you hate or what you do. It's about what's required for, you, for success. You can't do it yourself. You hire somebody who does it for you. But you can't process, uh, pro uh, procrastinate. It, the, the, the next point is you have to have win-win uh, mentality because you need partnerships. If it's all going to be about you, me, 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 my way, me winning, then who's going to partner with you? And partnership is about compromise. So you need to have partnerships. Another one, you have to have a support structure at home, around you, because when you feel down, when people, average people around you are telling you this is a stupid idea, you know, you're a failure, you're wasting your time. Why? Because they want you to be an average person like them. That's what average people want. And you're surrounded by average people. That that's why it's average. It's the most common majority, right? Uh, you, so you need to have support structure at home or with friends who people will tell you, don't worry, don't hear, don't listen to others. These are, don't listen to them, right? So you have to uh, stay, uh, stay on track, move forward. The other point is you have to have uh, uh, emotional resilience. You can't be a moody person. I, I'm, I'm, I, today I work, tomorrow I don't work. You know, you have these bursts of anger upon, against your team. You abuse your people. You know, the sort of you know, the, the Steve Jobs thing, you know? There was even a term called, you have, somebody has been steved and, and, and emotionally abused. You can't do that with the people don't want to work with you anymore. So you have to be, uh, you have to control your temper and your mood. And, and um, yeah, the other point is the people have bad partners. Bad partners, bad partners. So what do bad partners do? They ruin your thing. They take, uh, they, they destroy all the, they spread, they uh, waste all the energy and you end up just trying to manage um, a partnership. You need to have, uh, you can't do, you cannot be an entrepreneur without being good salesman. You have to sell, you have to sell. You have to know how to sell. You have to know how to ship. If you have the best idea and you can't sell it, then how, if you can't sell it yourself, the father of this idea, the creator of this idea, if you can't sell it yourself, then who's going to sell it, right? I'm, I'm almost 1% left, so if you're disconnected, that's it, my apologies. 
I love you all. So I'll continue until electricity or the power is gone. Uh, so you need, you need, you need to have. Uh, you can't afford to have soft skills. You have to have soft skills, communication skills, and all other skills. You need to have smart marketing, very smart marketing, and you need, you need to have confidence in yourself and you need to have the right heart and the right passion right and how do you build confidence right by every day trying to prove to yourself by working day and day one step at a time so that you build confidence because everything around you will try to destroy your confidence so you have to have that and then you have to have an exit strategy right. The team is saying we're going to turn this into a case study or documentary. Okay, so 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 uh, so uh, have you seen the voice? Uh, and in the voice, in the voice, in the voice trials, at least in the trials of the voice, on the trials of the voice. Some people come thinking that they are absolutely, you know, the Pavarotti's of this new age, right? In the trials, in the, in, the, in, the, in the casting, until they start singing and you see the faces of the jury. Oh my God, you know, oh my God. And you ask yourself, didn't anybody advise this guy that, you know, th his, this person's sound, voice is absolute horrible? I mean, it's obvious, it's horrible. But in his mind, he has the best voice ever, right? And, and people gently tell him or her that, listen, this is not working, that your voice is not really the best voice for this one. It's not really working. And they have to find some other careers. But what happens, they start getting angry at the, at the jury and they leave the place uh, cursing at the jury and telling them, we will show you, you fools, that how we are the real superstars. And what do you know? You are a bunch of failures, you know? Now, these people are living in absolute, absolute, absolute uh, illusion. Uh, now, why am I saying that? Because everybody thinks that he or she, everybody thinks that he or she is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, has the best idea, that they are the smartest. Everybody thinks that. And we have personal loyalty, personal loyalty to our ideas. So, and we still keep fighting them. So there is a thin line between not giving up. There is a thin line between not giving up and perse perseverance and persistence and resilience and between knowing when to exit. I personally don't know where this thin line is because, because it's easy to say I'm going to give up. I remember a case where somebody was developing a program. Somebody was developing a program. And they tried one version after the other. Version number 813 worked. Until 812 did not work. So imagine if they have given up on version 812 or 11. 813 worked, and it became a $50 million business. Software, right? So, and I also know of people who believe that they have the absolute best idea in the world, right? And they're still behind the idea. I know a person, I know a person, I'm not going to mention names, of course I wouldn't, but I know a person, uh, he was one of my students, he attended a leadership, executive leadership program with me a long time ago. Anyway, so he started this idea, and they just keep throwing money into this idea. Just more and more money. It has been, Nine years, and the idea has not picked up. Nine years. One investor after the other. He's a good salesman. So he keeps convincing more people to come in and come in and come in and come in. But the, everything is just being wasted to the point that he's losing his marriage because his wife even got a serious story. It's a true story. His wife is fed up that I can't take this anymore. This is not working. Either get a proper job or let's stop this madness. I mean, you can't just, you know, continue after 10 years of failures. Obviously, something is not working. So you have to know when to exit. Now, how do you know when to exit or not exit? My best answer to this, my best answer is surround yourself with a council of wise people, people who really believe in you, whom you trust their judgment, whom you trust their wisdom. Surround yourself with these people. 
okay and and get their feedback all the time because if they believe in you and they have the, they act like a sanity check for you they're telling you what works and what doesn't work right they're telling you if you have illusions and you're being delusional or not listen to these people because if they're saying if they still believe in it then go for it but if everybody everybody even the most trusted friends the wisest people people who were with you in the past they're telling you man enough enough either get some new idea or evolve your ideas something else or change it and you're not listening then you're committing uh, professional suicide so know when to uh, exit right now uh, another another reason why entrepreneurs fail is not having a viable business plan I already talked about this because if you don't have a viable business plan of course it will fail right and the business plan it should be first and foremost for you because it's your own roadmap to success right so you have to have a viable business plan if you don't do that then your entire strategy of course will fail um, also one reason people fail is they don't find enough investors because they haven't sold them the idea well they haven't presented them the idea well they didn't know how to communicate tell the story or they didn't have you know a convincing value proposition or because they well went short on cash so there's no more cash although they started with enough cash right but because of not adapting properly enough and because because of not being wise enough in spending uh, in spending in spending uh, money they eventually went out of cash that's why partnership is important remember Steve Jobs and the other guy the wise I don't know what his name I forgot his name the guy who actually developed the product so you need to have at least two or three people around you so that you're always grounded so you're always in if you're in la la land more 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 money I don't know if you watched the movie the aviator you know by I don't know his I forgot the name of the of the of the of the actor it will come to me now is the person who did uh, the wolf of uh, wall street so um okay so 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 um so i said wait 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 in the internet connection is bad. I think you're cutting out. Wait one so second, one second. I suggest if you turn off the, your camera. I will. I will. Uh, I, will I will. I will use uh, 4G. One second. I will use 4G. Okay. So so what happened? Okay. Now we should be going to 4G. I hope it's better. Um, through 4G, I hope it's better. Is it better slightly? 4G. Okay, is it better now? It should be better now. Yes? Okay. Uh, should, I, should I go on or how, what are we doing? Should I, should should I go on? Yes, you're, uh, you're live again. Okay, so so so. Okay, I just uh, let me just finish. Uh, let me let me just finish few points. So so be careful about be careful about uh, uh, cash management. Uh, so you don't run out of cash. Um, uh, be careful that there is actual market needs. So entrepreneurs also because there's no actual market need. And the other point is that uh, sometimes there's product issue, the product doesn't work. So they have product or, you know, prototype issues or service issues, technical issues in the product. So it doesn't take off. And uh, last before least or not least is competition. Uh, competition is stronger or more resilient or more persistent than them. Um, so that what that kills them. And that's, that happens every single day and uh, i mean just look at the apps business uh, hundreds of thousands of apps but only few succeed because you know there's so much competition and uh, the last one is bad timing uh, because um, i mean all of this is fine um, all of this is fine uh, uh, all of this is fine uh, perseverance and the rest everything is fine but sometimes it's really also you need luck and luck in terms of so many other elements coming together and you cannot control that 
uh, especially luck in timing. So, like, I mean, take Bill Gates. He was the right person at the right time, uh, with the right mindset, with the right setup, with the right technology, and uh, in the right place. You know, I mean, uh, he used to uh, go overnight, sneak out of his room, go to the only uh, big computer that existed in his city, in the library, uh, public library, so that he can develop his product, develop it, and come back early in the morning uh, when uh, back home. Uh, so if, if, that compu if he was not in that city, if that city did not have the library with that computer, it would not have it. So, so it's not only about also being talented or genius or all of that. It's also about having the right luck. Uh, and you cannot control that. All what you have to do is to train. Uh, in, in conclusion, I would say uh, entrepreneurs make history. Entrepreneurs uh, shape the world. So I salute you. Uh, don't stop. Um, keep fighting the way we did today, never give up. Um, what's happening now, if it's a time of crisis, that is going to be your default set of business. What happened with us today, this is your every single day challenge. You have to get this. And none of this was staged. Did we give up? No. Did I give up? No. Did Eli give up? No. Right? One door closed, we open the window. A million door closed, you open the window. You're battering so many things at the same time. So you don't give up. Even if it whatever kills you, if you believe in your purpose, if you believe in yourself, if you have the courage, if you exercise your leadership, if you're up to the challenge, right? right? If you have the right heart, if you have the right passion, right? You don't give up. You do not, you do not, you do not give up, okay? And... Um, and uh, uh, whether entrepreneurs uh, are made or born, um, I'll tell you something. I battled with this idea for a long time uh, because I'll tell you from a scientific perspective. I'll share with you a scientific perspective. And that is the following. Uh, the scientific perspective is the following. Atunil, uh, power bank. Give me power bank. Um, it is the following. Um, because one of the most important element in entrepreneurship is courage, is being... Uh, is tolerance to risk because of that, right? Because of this, uh, what happens? Uh, I, I, my, part of my research went um, uh, and at some time uh, into the idea that you can't, you can't listen carefully. That you're either born entrepreneur or not. Not because in the born uh, or made stuff, but because there is a genetic component to fear. Some people have more, by default, tolerance to fear than, uh, than others, by default, by genetics. So courage, which is needed, and perseverance, and risk-taking, and, and resilience to failure, right? all that, you need to be strong for that, yes? So, so my research is to say no. Uh, either you have it or not. Now, more research, and I've spent 50 or 45 years of research on all of this, and I've studied with the greatest mind on earth, is, says this is, this is, it's much deeper than this. I'll tell you where is the, 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 the link. The real, real reason of entrepreneurship, what's entrepreneurship? The real core of entrepreneurship, my friend, is about finding meaning in life. It's about meaning. Entrepreneurship gives you meaning. Ideas, your idea, pursuing your idea that you believe in, gives your life meaning. And this is a very powerful thing. This is a very, very powerful thing, having meaning in life. So when you're exercising entrepreneurship that's based on an idea that you believe in, that's an extension of your soul, because you absolutely believe in, when you have that, right, then you're exercising meaning of life. And when you have that, when you're operating at that wavelength, then courage comes by default. Because it's not really about the idea. The power of entrepreneurship, what makes people succeed, is not the power of ideas, it's not the business, it's not the money, it's not the seduction of success or no success. It is what this idea means to them. It gives their life meaning. And everybody has that. Everybody has meaning in life. Everybody looks for meaning in life. So don't worry about this. You don't need to be Elon Musk. 
You don't have to be genetically whatever uh, designed for entrepreneurship. You have to don't have to make your first million at 18. You don't have to be entrepreneur from kindergarten where you are selling lemonade at school. You don't have to have to be all these romantic stories. You can be an entrepreneur at 50 or 60 or 80 or 90. Right? It doesn't matter. Right? If you have the right calling from within you, if you have the right internal motivation. If you have the right internal inspiration, where an idea inspires you, talk to your soul, and you're so dedicated and committed to doing it, then you will do it. So don't be fooled by all the rubbish that is on the social media, you know, that uh, creates, uh, creates what? Uh, um, a romantic view of what entrepreneurship is all about, you know, through Jeff Bezos and all these people, Elon Musk and all this stuff. It is not like that. Every single person can be an entrepreneur. If you believe in something, and you believe that's your calling, and you're so passionate about it, and you have it inside your heart, and you have the dedication and the commitment and resilience and the discipline to make it happen, then you're an entrepreneur. And it doesn't matter if you're a social entrepreneur, political entrepreneur. Gandhi was an entrepreneur of idea, right? He had an idea, and he made it happen. And that's the independence of his country. Uh, Mandela was an entrepreneur. Mother Teresa was an entrepreneur. The prophets were entrepreneurs. All of these are entrepreneurs. They had their idea and they build institutions around it and they mobilize people around it through exercising leadership and through exercising uh, self-leadership, right? And did what? And changed, changed life and changed reality. So if you have it within you, if you believe in that, you, right? If you have an idea and you're really passionate about it, go for it. Just keep an open mind and be resilient and perseverant and Sooner or later, success will happen as long as you're adaptive and as long as you keep an, an open mind. Because most probably you'll end up somewhere else, but at least you're on the right path. And guess what? It's a miserable life. It is the most challenging and stressful life, but it is the happiest life. You know why? Because you're always, you're always, you're always in line with yourself. Because you're always in tune with your soul. Because what you're doing is an extension of your soul. I have never seen an entrepreneur who is not stressed, but I have never seen an entrepreneur who is not happy. Yes. Maybe it is. Okay, don't give up. I know <laughs> this is the answer I get from your conclusion, but it's really, it's really hard. Maybe if we start uh, going on, maybe we, we, we will uh, lose too much in our business. Okay, what's your first name? Rima. Rima. Rima Khairanda. Rima. Beautiful name, Rima. Okay, let me tell you. Listen, I'm going to. I'm a very pragmatic person because leadership. Also, you can't be in La La Land when you exercise leadership, which is close to uh, entrepreneurship. So, um, listen. We don't need to wait for Lebanon. I mean, just look what happened with us just recording this session. So, giving up is not an option. If you give up on the entire idea, then you're not an entrepreneur. Provided you're giving up because of difficulty, not because of 
you know, factual evidence that the idea should be improved, right? If you're giving up because of difficulty, no. This is, you're not an entrepreneur. That's number one. Because nothing will happen if you give up. That's number one. Number two, you have to be tactical in this. So business plans have many aspects. There's so many things that you have to develop. There's a million things that you have to develop. And most probably you're understaffed and you're working by yourself or maybe with very few people. So you see, considering the current situation, what is it that we can do to develop, to use your time properly? Now, in my, I'll give, just give you my example. I have spent the last five years, six years, just writing books and I've taken a sabbatical from my corporate life. You know, after 30, li 30 years in international, as an international executive, I said enough and, you know, at a very high economic cost and, you know, uh, financial cost. I said, I'm going to just take five years or whatever, few years and work and write books. I've done that. And then suddenly all hell broke loose and I had, you know, so many engagements, uh, public speaking, you know, tours around the world. I mean, you name it. And suddenly all this happened. So what do we do? What did I do? I said, okay, I needed at some stage to, to move all my writings, all the 10 books or so into the digital world, right? because I didn't spend enough time on the digital world because I was actually doing research and you know, writing and publishing, I mean, real books, right? I mean, classical books, paper books, right? Although they're also e-books. So what I'm doing now, what I have been doing recently is I've expanded my team of colleagues and I've hired um, people who I consider you know, partners in this, uh, who believe in what I'm doing and then the message and the purpose of what we're doing and we are working day and night of translating uh, the content of our books right into the digital universe so that you know YouTube uh, Facebook the whole thing so that it's all documented right and 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 we're using technology now as much as we can in our favor because it was part of the plan anyway so i can't go to give keynotes i can't go to give speeches i can't go to do you know to the executive seminars but i definitely can record at home and i can stand in front of a camera and you know talk about the content of my books so what i'm saying is okay adapt so what do you do you adapt uh, look at your business plan and see what aspect of this plan in a very pragmatic way, I can now do using the time and or the condition, the circumstances that this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this uh, situation has provided. And I know many people who told me that they have managed to do in this time, you know, in these past few months, uh, much more than they've did in the past. They fix, they redesigned their face, their their uh, their uh, website. Uh, they launched uh, technology platforms. They did so many other research. They did trials. They built prototypes. They opened on new markets, and you name it. So, should you give up? Definitely not. Otherwise, we're not talking entrepreneurship. Uh, just because there are difficulties and this is not going to be the last difficulty there will be much more right you have to open options right in times of crisis and see how can you use your time in the way that is most adaptive to your plans until things change uh, and that's going to be uh, that's the name of the game and guess what as I said to you, it's not going to be the last one. I mean, when this is over, Corona is over and all other political problems and economic problems are over, there will be other kind of problems. I mean, who knows what my other problems will be? As I said to you, what we have going, what we're going through is just the default nature of entrepreneurship. It's the default nature. So what do you do? You adapt and you look at the aspects of your plan that could be done during this time until situations change, then you, you adapt back and you continue with the rest of the plans. I can hear you, Christel. Hello, I'm Christel. Uh, I'm a from Isaac student. I would like to ask that during the failure period, we have to need some uh, good attitude in order to keep investors interested in our project and idea. So what we need to do, like a small, a small secret uh, in order to keep them uh, interested. Okay, what comes to mind is number one, keep them always informed. So don't ever lose touch with them because you don't want them to suspect that you've disappeared or you've given up on your dream or that you've changed your mind and say, where did Christelle disappear? Maybe she changed her mind, 
right? So you never ever lose touch with them. That's the power of networking and communication. You keep them updated. And not only that, you use this exam as an example of your resilience. So you tell them how you're using this time. You tell them this, how you're using, how you're using this time so that what? So that you can proceed with your plan. And you tell them, I mean, you can, if you're working on improving prototype, improving the business plan, doing whatever it is. So all what you need to do is not, never, ever, ever lose uh, the trust and the faith that the investors have in you. How do you do that? By showing them that you're adapting and your heart is there, your passion is there, and you're just adapting. And that sends them a very strong message that this is somebody who, when situations change, when she has difficulties, she will know how to manage. She will not be discouraged. So use it to send a very powerful message about your commitment, about your adaptability, about how you can alter yourself and change so that right, you stay on track and so that you invest in their trust in you. Right? Because what, listen, it's all about trust. It's all about trust. L listen to learn from Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett says the following. The most important part of my investment is the people who are managing this company. I looked at the company, I see the product. I do two things. I see the product. I see, I ask myself, can I use this product? Can I understand it myself? Does it make sense? Yes, I can use, I can see this is Coca-Cola, this is McDonald's, and he's an investor in these things. Then I look at the management. Do I trust these people that their quality of management can manage this company? Yes, I trust them, then that's it. And by the way, he talks to his managers once a year. He doesn't just follow up every day. He just wants one a year brief briefing that they're on the right track. So if you can demonstrate to this, to this to the investor that you are committed and passionate and you are adaptive and you're using your time pragmatically, he, will, he or they uh, will, will continue to trust you more and you would have turned this into an investment. Yes, I can hear it. Fadal. Thank you very much for the very inspiring talk. Uh, really, really thank you for taking the time and uh, and thank you Eli, for also making the talk public. Uh, it's uh, really uh, uh, we really can feel the passion and your passion uh, is uh, somehow uh, spread uh, was spread. Uh, uh, giving us positive uh, vibes that we really need uh, during these times. Um, you talked about a lot about adapt adaptability, and I've been following uh, for two, two days. I've been reading a little bit uh, some of your publications, and you always talk about the importance of adaptability, or you call it sometimes elasticity. Yes. But how uh, how far do you think uh, an entrepreneur? have to be uh, uh, or have to adapt and how, how far are you willing to modify your business plan in order to adapt to current situations like the ones we are going through in, in Lebanon my friend it's very simple adapt or die there's no other choice adapt or die there's yani the um, listen uh, there's two points there's adaptation and evolution I like evolution more. Adaptation is how you adapt to the current situation. That's great. You have to do that, otherwise you die, because you can't have misalignment between you and your current reality and the current situation. You have to match. That's number one. Number two is you have to use the, what the current situation, changing situations, offer you in terms of opportunity so that you can evolve. So you have no option but to adapt and to evolve. No option. And I don't believe, listen to this carefully, I don't believe in business plan. I believe in business planning. Because a business plan is a static plan. By a business planning is a mindset of planning. You understand? So you need to be in a continuous state of planning, of business planning. 
So every single day you go to your business plan and you ask yourself, does this still stand considering the current reality or the current changes in reality? If, it's, if the answer is yes, you continue. If the answer is no, so what do you do? You, somebody said you're going in the wrong direction. You keep going, that's suicide. So you do a U-turn or you do alterations or you do adaptation or whatever that is. Of course you adapt. Who gives a damn about business plans? It doesn't matter. Business plan is a sense of direction that gives you a roadmap. But once on the, on the ground, everything changes. Reality changes. Nobody can grasp reality fully. Reality is far more complex than all of us. So you have to be adaptive. What does adaptive mean? You keep an eye on reality, and as your interpretation of your reality changes, what do you do? You change. So you change business plan, you change your, your approach, you change your style, you change your location, you change your priorities, you change anything that, everything is subject to change. Nothing is sacred. The only thing that you don't change is your, pro, is your purpose. Even the idea you change. Even the idea you change. You know the whole idea, the entire idea, you, you change. If you thought of doing it on so and so and so a platform, right? And then suddenly there's a new platform or something happens or somebody else, a competitor jumped in and he dominated the market with uh, some platform. So you go back to your purpose and you ask, what am I trying to do? How is it I'm trying to help the world? What am I trying to achieve here? And what do you do? You change your thinking. So you might scrap the whole thing from scratch and say, okay, we have to achieve the same purpose but a different way because the world has changed. This technology disappeared, the rules have changed, the economy changed, the environment changed, but there's something new. We use the, the new material that we have in hand, the new reality, and we find other ways of fulfilling the purpose. So of course you adapt, my friend. Otherwise, um, otherwise there's no other option. And I, uh, more than adapt, I don't like adapt a lot. I like to evolve because Sometimes people adapt to a dysfunctional reality. They adapt to abuse. They adapt to, to, to failure. They adapt to being marginalized. They adapt to being taken for granted. You know? They adapt. You don't want to adapt. You want to improve. So you only adapt if adaptation is part of evolution. I'll just give an example. Your, I mean, your country now, right, is in a big mess, correct? Yes or no? Okay, so what are people adapting? To, they're adapting. So wherever there's a small plot of plant, even a small pot in, the, you know, in their home, they're trying to plant food. Yes or no? Okay, so, so what they're saying, okay, things are bad, we'll adapt. My friend, don't be like that frog that kept on adapting until it lost its life in a boiling water because they kept on adapting. And sometimes you have to jump, sometimes you have to revolt, sometimes you have to uh, turn the table upside down, sometimes you have to you know, stand up, sometimes you have to fight, sometimes you have to do whatever. But you don't adapt to a negative situation. You don't adapt to a negative reality. That's, that's another name of su for surrendering. You understand? You only adapt if adaptation moves you forward. Otherwise, you fight. That's the spirit of entrepreneurship. Clear? Clear, thank you very much. Tikram. And I think you, you answered a comment uh, for, uh, from Marie Jose Ayil. So, uh, yeah. the situation in Lebanon, as you hear now, that you're taking. it will last for at least five, six, seven years. So, I think, I think you covered, uh, you covered this, this aspect in your, in your last comment. You adapt. Yeah. Exactly. You don't give up on your purpose. If your purpose is honorable one, if you believe in it, you don't change your purpose. You don't. You change your strategy. You change your business plan. You change the process. You change the workflow. You change the discipline. You change your location. You change your country. You change what a platform, technology, it doesn't matter. Change whatever you want to change. You don't change your purpose. You don't. 
you, uh, you, 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 you create new environment so that where you can fulfill your purpose in a different way. What if this situation stands for another 10 years? Oh, okay, okay, well, what if, okay, uh, the situation was fixed and then something else happens? You cannot predict the future. The future will always be unknown. Whatever happens in the future, has, it's not your problem. What's the new reality? Okay, I adapt and you move forward, right? And you guys are still young and full of energy. So if you talk about giving up now, when are you going to fight? You have something that many people don't have, which is time on your side, time. I'm now in my mid fifties and I feel like I'm an 18 year old. So do I have to change whatever it takes? I never give up on my purpose. I never give up. It is non-negotiable. And guess what? You're designed for struggle. You're designed to strive. You're designed to impress. You're designed to inspire. You're designed to fight. You're designed to win by nature. By DNA, you're designed for that. You're designed for emotional and mental resilience. You know, by neuroplasticity in your mind, you're designed for that. So you find it is just a problem. You, you look at it and you say, okay, why are we making a big deal out of it? It's just a problem that needs a solution. We'll find a solution. Learn this phrase, learn, learn, learn this phrase. When people make a big issue out of it, say, guys, it's just a problem. Take the emotion out of it. A problem needs a solution. So focus on the solution, find the solution to yourself, and then move forward. Ali, uh, you have a question. Ali, uh, please be more specific in your question. Yes, hello, this is Ali Basile uh, from Spivio. Uh, I have a question. Uh, do you completely agree that the world will fully change after COVID-19? I'm talking about entertainment and, uh, and interactions between people. I disagree. I f uh, uh, this is, again, people usually, what we usually do, we go to extremes. Uh, the people will completely change the the world will completely completely is a big world will we will things will be a little bit different yes things will be a little bit different uh, not because of COVID-19 because I'll tell you why because what COVID-19 has forced us to do is to explore ways of life that were available to us but we were not exploring them I'll just give you the most obvious example of working from home I have friends I sit on the boards of many organizations and two of them, where I sit on their board, uh, we've decided that, you know what, for some department, it's going to be permanent working from home. And guess what? We've, di we've, we've discovered that the technology was available long, long time ago, but we were not using it. Who said people have to come to the office every day, right? Zoom was there all the time uh, for a long time. You know, um, uh, 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 what's his name? Skype was there. Uh, team, uh, Microsoft team was there, uh, Cisco's uh, Webex was there all the time, but we haven't really used it. So what, we, what this has forced us is that there is aspect of technology that we can use and they stay permanently. But will we stop being human beings? No. Will we stop needing interactions? No. Will we stop wanting to uh, connect with people? Uh, we're designed for touching, we're designed for hugging, we're designed for uh, connection, we're designed for handshake. So sooner or later, we will, uh, we, will, um, we will find that, we will find that. Remember when in the publishing industry, and I have that, I mean, when I, in my books, when, I, when, I, when I'm doing my books, uh, people said, we're going to be a paperless uh, society and everything is electronic. No, some people enjoy reading books in paper. So we will always be human beings. Uh, so don't worry about it. Keep your mind open, see what COVID has taught you and integrate it in your life to, you know, to improve your life. But uh, sooner or later, we will go back to flying, we'll find solution to these problems, we'll sit in theaters, in cinemas. Uh, this is not the first challenge of humanity. Uh, it's not going to last. I believe in the human ingenuity. Uh, I mean, we've done so many bad things uh, on this planet, but we've also done so many great things that we should be proud of. We're an amazing species and we'll find solutions and things will be better. Please, thank you, thank you for this uh, amazing response and uh, for this amazing session, uh, very inspirational uh, and uh, thank you, thank you Mike. And you know what, 
when entrepreneurs do, when everybody think, listen, you know this, you know this phrase? Is everybody listening? Are you with me, guys? When, listen carefully. Yes. When, you know this phrase? When there is, bu when there is blood on the street, buy. Do you know this phrase? It's a phrase said by Rothschild. You know who is Rothschild? The family of Rothschild? They're one of the most low-profile, powerful, influential families in the world. How did Rothschild started? When Napoleon lost Waterloo, the Battle of Waterloo, there was panic in France and in Europe. So people went on a panic mode. What did uh, Mr. Rothschild, the first father Rothschild, do? What did he do? He started buying property from all these people who panicked. And he bought and bought and bought and bought because people panicked in times of crisis. And all the wealth or much of the wealth of the Rothschilds now in the financial property, you know, real estate comes from that decision, you know, some 200 years ago plus uh, because somebody saw an opportunity in a disaster or in a crisis. So other people panic and they start, you know, mourning and they start, uh, uh, they start uh, giving up and they start doing what uh, average people do in these situations. Um, but entrepreneurs, they don't have time to feel negative emotions. They don't have time to mourn and to whine. They're continuously asking, where is the opportunity? Where is the opportunity? What are the new needs? What, is, what new demands, wants, needs, services have, em have emerged? How can I contribute to providing new products solution, and solutions and services that, that came, that appeared with this new reality? So while other people are desperate, they're giving up, they're in a bad mood, entrepreneurs, they have their eyes open, you know, 10 over 10, 20 over 10, just looking around for opportunities. And there are plenty because situations change, markets change, Customer needs change, old needs died or went dormant, but new needs developed. So instead of complaining, my friend, this is a time of opportunity. See how you can find opportunities, because that's what entrepreneurs do. When everybody is panicking, they are looking for opportunities. Well, you know, it's a cliche to say that uh, that the Chinese word for the word crisis means also an opportunity. That's the Chinese definition of the word crisis. It's the same word used for opportunity. Now, if 1.5 billion people believe that, and you can see what they've achieved in terms of economy, maybe it's time for you and me also to learn and move our mindset from panicking and swearing and complaining and negativity into, okay, how can I find opportunity in what's happening?
So uh, thank you, Mark, and uh, let's do it for you. Um, um, I just want you to remember uh, what we went through to make this session happen when you're feeling down as an entrepreneur or when you're facing difficulties. Giving up is not an option. You die trying. That's what leadership is about. That's what entrepreneurship is about. You die trying. You die, you don't die disappointed because you've given up. <laughs>